Welcome everyone to this month's edition of the Platform Backend Functional Group Update. My name is Dao Man and I'm the engineering manager for this team. And today is the 30th of May, 2018. Um, I'd like to start this edition off by welcoming Imre Farkas, who is the latest addition to our team. Hello, yes, there you go. Imre Farkas, who's the latest addition to our team. He joined uh, three weeks ago to the day. Imre, would you like to take a moment to introduce yourself to those of us who might not know you yet? Sure, thanks for the introduction. Um, so my name is Imre Farkas, and I'm located in, in Budapest, Hungary. I previously worked on OpenStack on the parameter management service and also supporting operations. Um, later, I joined a company providing a marketing platform with AI and big data solutions. And then three weeks ago, I, I joined GitLab. And uh, previously, I've used GitLab uh, on my private server um, hosting my repositories, and I was quite happy that I have a, uh, such a great tool uh, that just worked. And uh, I was even more happy to learn that GitLab is hiring, um, so I started to learn more about the company, and I got quite enthusiastic about the uh, open culture, and of course the uh, open source product, which I have used for long. Um, so, so far I'm still getting up to speed, and uh, working on smaller issues and on general onboarding, um, which I have enjoyed a lot so far. So that's it for me. All right, thank you, Imre. Uh, I'm very happy you found out we were hiring because I'm very happy you've been able to uh, join the team. Um, all right, next up, let me see. Since we last spoke, uh, which is about five weeks ago in the last functional group update for this team, we have done a couple of things. Uh, I'm not gonna go into too much detail for the first three, but I like to be complete for those of uh, our viewers who might not know the GitLab development cycle as well as most of the team members do. Uh, but one notable thing is that on May 22nd, we, GitLab, released GitLab 10.8, which had some notable contributions from the platform team. First of all, we moved push mirroring to core, which means it is now open source and available for free to everyone. Um, and the great thing about this is that it will allow people to use their GitLab repository as a canonical source and then still have a copy, um, read-only copy on another instance because, for example, they already have an existing community there or because they're moving away from it. Um, they can do that in you know, kind of a stepped progress and process instead of doing it all at once. Next up uh, for GDPR, we had to scramble a little bit, but we managed to get the functionality inside GitLab to enforce acceptance of terms of service. Uh, we managed to get it in before the 25th when the GDPR went into effect. Uh, thanks, Bob, for working on that. We also improved the performance of the repository size limit check. Um, GitLab has functionality where you can limit the maximum size of an individual repository. In GitLab.com, we wanted to enable this um, to limit repositories to a maximum size of 10 gigabytes, but the actual check that performed when a new push came in um, that, that verified whether the incoming push was larger or smaller than this size limit was relatively slow, uh, we, which meant we never actually enabled it because it would just slow down pushes so much. With this improved performance, we are able uh, going to be able to do that if we haven't already. Thank you, Ruben, for working on that. Um, and then last but not least, the title might not sound too interesting. And when I tried to explain what the point of this was uh, in the previous FGU, I don't think I did a very good job. So I hope that the next graph will be more telling. Um, can you spot when that change went live? That change to import, to move import and mirroring related columns of the project stable. Um, I think you can figure it out. Uh, and if you look at that about May 10th at 4 p.m., um, you'll see that total debt tuples went from about 20K to somewhere around 5K. Um, for those of you who are not database or specifically Postgres experts, basically debt tuples are bloat inside the Postgres database. Uh, when you delete a row or when you update a row, these rows are not immediately deleted from the file system. They are simply marked as dead uh, rows that shouldn't be looked at anymore. And they will be around until the next, next vacuum goes around. Um, Vacuums can be relatively costly and vacuums can block a lot of other stuff that's going on. So you want to do as few, uh, little of these as possible and you don't want it to take too long. And on top of that, the more dead tuples are inside the repository, uh, I mean database, um, the larger the actual storage size on disk will be and the slower any queries will be because of course they will be faster if they have a smaller data set to look through than if the data set is larger. Um, and these import and mirroring related columns were a huge part of the you know, kind of reason why we had so many dead tuples in the project table. Um, and thanks to the great work Tiago did here, um, this is, you know, 
now only a fourth of what we were seeing before after this change went live. So that is very good for GitLab.com and very good for uh, all of our experiences using it. So that's what we've been working on the last uh, month or so. Um, until the next time I have an FGU like this, these are some of the things we'd like, we're gonna do. First of all, we're gonna finalize the development of GitLab 11.0 on June 7th and release it on the 22nd. There's a couple of things that the platform backend team is contributing to this. First of all, we are going into general availability with group level single sign-on on GitLab.com using SAML. Uh, this is an effort that has been in development for a few months already, and it's been uh, live behind a feature flag uh, for a while as well. We've been kind of testing it, um, and now for 11.0, it's finally going to be ready to be opened up to the world. But this will be very interesting to those larger customers or, or companies that want to use SAML to manage their uh, provisioning and their, their users and their memberships. Um, but who do not want to actually host their own GitLab instance. Now they'll be able to hook up their SAML to their GitLab.com group and they can use single sign on there. Um, more robust error handling and retrying of fork and import failures. Of course, we don't like it when forks or imports fail, so this will definitely help there. And there's a couple other uh, of major efforts that we are contributing to 11.0. Also notable to anyone watching uh, will be that we will be removing API v3. We deprecated this in, a in GitLab 10.0 when we um, launched API v4. We were originally planning to remove it a couple of months after that, which would have been like six months um, ago from now, but because of course for larger um, customers and, and environments, it can take quite a while to modify all of their tooling and all of the integrations. Uh, we have kind of kept postponing this and then at some point we decided to just do it in the next major release, which is happening on June 22nd. So in GitLab 11.0, API v3 will be completely gone. We'll also be deprecating DSA SSH keys because these are um, relatively unsafe and they have been deprecated inside OpenSSL for a while. Uh, OpenSSH, I mean, and now we are also going to be deprecating them on the GitLab side of things, which means that we will uh, prevent people from creating new DSS, DSA SSH keys, uh, and we will probably still allow them to be used for a transitioning period. People who already have their DSA SSH keys set up, uh, but at some point we will also stop accepting them entirely. And of course, we'll let everyone know when that happens. We are doing a little bit more than that. Of course, if you pull out that more link, you can see in our issue tracker exactly what the platform team is working on uh, for 11.0. And then on June 8th, we will kick off the development of GitLab 11.1. Oh, actually, Remy says V3 was actually deprecated starting with 9.0, not 10.0. Has it been that long, really? More than a year and a half? That's insane. My memory is uh, is not so good anymore, I guess. Um, either way, I was saying June 8th, we'll kick off the development of GitLab 11.1, and what's going to go in there, we will only be determining uh, ahead of that June 8th, and you can follow it live with us in the kickoff on that 8th of June. That's it for today's function group update. Uh, are there any questions from those in attendance? Looks like there aren't. So everyone have a great rest of your day and you get 22 minutes of uh, that day left. Back. Cheers everyone. Thanks for your attendance.